Welcome guys. It is Saturday and we are working on the Himalayan today. Just finished doing the Tusk Pilot Paneer install with the exhaust lowering mod uh, custom bracket we made. Just like they did on the Facebook groups, a couple of people suggested it. So you'll see that in a minute, uh, kind of my take on the whole thing and pluses and minuses of the Tusk bags. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, buy them. I think they're an incredible value for 250 bucks and uh, they're not without drawbacks, but they're just really good bags. So if you don't want to watch the whole thing, go ahead and buy with confidence. Now, the long version, I thought it would be appropriate to look at some different options here and kind of look at why I went with those and, and what I was looking for in a bag and how much I wanted to spend. So uh, to my left, your right, as you face the radio dial, we have some of the Royal Enfield hard boxes. Now these are made out of a combination of aluminum and steel. They have uh, aluminum body, steel parts like the latches and the brackets, and then plastic, kind of like almost like a nylon impact shields here on the corners. For, I think they're about 400 bucks, 450 bucks, really excellent for what they are. I have, I've had no complaints about these for using them on the road, commuting, and I even camped with them off-road one summer and uh, took them out a couple of times before I started experimenting with these. Thankfully, as you can see, they're in perfect condition. They haven't been dropped, and that's uh, that's a kind of a it was a, it was a stressor for me being out there with these, just because hard luggage it's really cool until you drop a bike on it, until you drop a bike uh, between or a bike pinching the luggage between a rock and the ground, or you heaven forbid get your leg caught up hitting this thing when you're you know trying to duck walk the bike through some uh, mud or something like that. So. It was always a source of stress, and ultimately, I took them off the bike for camping. Which left me thinking, okay, if I'm not going to be using these for camping, I kind of want to have some of the advantages that, uh, that they had. And with soft luggage, I did have to give up a few. One of the advantages that these have over soft luggage that I had to give up was these awesome top-mounted straps, these brackets where you put some straps through here. I, I run a top soft bag, like a, uh, a dry bag, on top of my luggage, and it holds a variety of different things that are kind of long to fit in one of the bags. And anyway, uh, I loved being able to you know, kind of cinch it down to these, and unfortunately, none of these soft options really have that option built into them. So that was one thing that I gave up. Another thing that I gave up was the quick disconnect. And well, you can get soft uh, bags with a quick disconnect, but not at 250 bucks. These, uh, as you know, you can just unscrew the insides, take them off the bike, really nice at camp, and they make great tables or chairs or whatever it is you wanna use them for when you're camping. So it was hard uh, to get rid of them, but I found that the stress of not wanting to, or worrying about wrecking them off-road was more than I really wanted to um, Think about when I was camping. So a buddy of mine let me borrow these to check out to experiment with soft bags. Now these are uh, Moscomoto uh, Backcountry 35s and they have an optional Molly attach pouch on the side here and uh, on the other side this is this one is similar but it's actually part of the bag. So you're gonna get a lot more than 35 liters with these the way they're set up. You got a 35 liter main compartment, roll up, okay, kind of like a dry bag system, and then big main compartment, and then these two side ones. On the outside of the Moscomotos, there's this, I call it, it's like a flap. You can probably you can stuff something in here, soft clothing, uh, if you got a ground sheet that you use for camp, this might be a great spot. Shove that in there, lash it down. They pretty much represent the Cadillac of uh, soft bags. Moscomoto's top of the line, and uh, they come with a lot of features, they, and they should, with the price, we'll get to that in a minute. Like a uh, quick disconnect from the factory, you just, um, you don't need to buy any kind of extra, this, is, this comes with the bags, and what it is is a puck system, and this puck, you can see here, this slides down. This bolts to your factory racks, and uh, it actually fits the Himalayan ones um, just fine. 
and it has still enough adjustment in it that you can raise the raise the position of the luggage up away from the exhaust. And uh, then when you want to take these off the bike, all you have to do is just literally just pull it off. And as you can see, they disconnect. So this is on your motorcycle. This is your luggage. Pull them off and, you know, go. So all-in-one soft option. They're pretty amazing. The downside of these, and with anybody who will, who's ever worked with Moscomoto will tell you, is the price. Um, they're about twelve hundred fifty bucks for the set. As and you know, for twelve hundred fifty bucks, things should come you know one hundred percent ready to go out of the box. I you know I completely agree with that. But it's still pretty hefty. I, I don't have that kind of cash to drop on soft bags right now. And uh, if I did, you know, these would be really good options. But I really wanted to see if we could do anything better uh, for the price. Like, relative of features to price, could we do any better? And I think the tusks accomplish it. I think they accomplish what I need them to do. They accomplish the features that I wanted out of this, trying them for a summer. But they do it at, I mean, geez, you know, almost a fifth of the price. So let's take a look at those on the bike and uh, I'll give you my thoughts on these now that we got them all set up. Okay, so here we can see the tusks installed on the bike. And uh, I bought the version with the optional bottle holders. Now before somebody says they're installed backwards, um, first of all, they're reversible. You can put them on any way you like. but. Uh, Tusk will tell you this is the this is the back, and um, there's a reason why I have my bottle holders installed on the front. We'll get to those in, in a little bit. But anyway, this is what they look like. Uh, they attach really well to the Himalayan frame, the luggage rack there. And if you notice, you can see down here, um, there's a lot of space between my exhaust and the bag because what we did, you can see in the earlier video, if you went and watched it, built this bracket here to lower down the exhaust just a bit, right? So this, we now have this extension bracket here and uh, it's, it's dropping the exhaust down just a little bit by changing the angle at the clamp. And that little change at the clamp makes a big change. Slow this down, makes a really big change here. So we have a lot of space in fact, if you get back here a little ways and look, that's plenty of room. So no chance of it smoking the bag, uh, driving fast on, you know, not that this bike goes fast, but if you're cruising and the exhaust gets hot, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to burn through your bag. So for 250 bucks, you, you know, people who are curious about these bags have probably watched lots of reviews, but I'll give you the really quick and dirty here. Uh, they, similar to the Moscomotos, they're kind of a flip top uh, roll bag design. So you get into them uh, and, and right away, I'll just start talking some of the disadvantages. These bags are going to lock down your stuff. They are going to strap it down and make it extremely secure, probably more than they need to be. And um, right away, as you're watching me do this, you'll see that it is not quite as quick to undo these, you got a lot of straps here to get these off. So if getting into the bag super quick, there you go. That's that's how long it takes. Uh, 35 liter main compartment, and then they have these interior dry bags, just like the uh, Moscomotos. Big difference though is at the top, there's no Velcro here. I actually, um, what, no, what they've done is the bag itself, you know, cinches down and closes. And so I can see why the, they maybe did that. So these can be removed, pulled out at camp. Um, maybe that's their version of the quick disconnect. You know, the shell stays on, pull out the main, um, the main compartment. But if you want to leave them in, I would probably cut off these and just put Velcro here and here and you know attach them permanently to the inside of the bag like the Moscomoto ones uh, if you're not planning on pulling these out. But it seems to be pretty good material. 
um, waterproof. I like the bright color uh, better than the Moscomotos. It's gray. These are good for signaling, I guess. If you, you know, you get in trouble, people can see them. So maybe an advantage there. It's pretty simple though. Pretty simple design, almost exactly the same. And the, uh, the weight of the material feels about the same. So uh, I know that I think Dork in the Road did a video talking about these, kind of how just heavy they are. And um, the thing is, I, I don't think compared to other premium luggage, honestly, I, I don't think these are, uh, I don't think these are any lighter, especially when you consider that they've got a pug system on the back, which with the addition to them, I'm pretty sure they're heavier. So. If you watched uh, Dork in the Road's video, and you know you're maybe thinking that, oh, these are heavy. I don't know if I want to get them. I, I actually think they're not that heavy. I mean, compared to other premium soft luggages, and they're certainly not that heavy compared to the hard boxes. I mean, the hard boxes from Royal Enfield are, you know, not light. There's nothing about anything Royal Enfield makes that's light. So, anyway, pretty good construction, rock solid. Looking at how they attach to the motorcycle, you're going to see here that they have a, um, on the back, there's this soft, I'll call it a soft plate. Now this is the piece that's sewn to the back of the bag that is designed to touch on your racks. So when you install these on your motorcycle, what you want to do is make sure that the bottom of this plate is, is the part here that just touches on your rack. Okay, so it's kind of a thick, kind of an armored material. You can see it over here a little better. Um, it's still soft, but it's the piece that's designed to be touching up against the bars. And depending on the rack you have, it's got a pretty big flap at the top that's gonna come up and over the top bar. Since the Royal Enfield racks are pretty small, it's got a pretty significant overlap there. So when you install them, uh, getting the bottom part lined up here is going to give you the maximum distance. And so that coupled with, let's get the strap out of the way, that coupled with lowering the exhaust just a little bit, it's going to give you plenty of room. Uh, I know that on David's setup, the guy who kind of pioneered the bracket, little lowering bracket here, he, guy had this idea, he eliminated these. He went with uh, a setup that didn't have, didn't utilize this. He, I think he kind of went down and looped these back up. I'm gonna go ahead and keep these across. I think the cross system really gives it some stability for really loading stuff down. And uh, I, I'm anxious to see how Dave, David's turns out. I'm not saying he's wrong, but uh, I think this is really strong to be pushing stuff down into him. So. I'm gonna keep it this way, this is how it was designed, and uh, we'll call it that. But over the top, strap system. So, good advantage there is it's strong. A disadvantage there is you're gonna to have to probably cut some of this. They do have little retainer clips, but there's a lot of material here. These, bike, or these bags are meant to be used on lots of different motorcycles, and the Himalayan is pretty small. So there is way more material here than you need um, to do that. So anyway, you're gonna probably cut these, trim these. Same with some of these adjusters down here. There's plenty to cinch it, but again, there's not enough. There's just no way you could, you could stuff this thing in here and we can kind of go back and forth, but I think I would probably just cut it, adjust it out to what is gonna be the pretty much the width of the bag and then cut some of this off, burn it with a, with a lighter there to, to seal it off and then you, you know, you're pretty good to go and you don't have all these extra you know, straps here if you're not gonna attach anything to the top of them. But you do you, the straps are there. I got the um, bottle holders here, it's a small bottle holder. And again, it's way overdone. As you see, I'm doing this. To get in there, we still have to pull a, a D hook out of there, a G hook out. And uh, it's just kind of skinny. So this is really good for like, a, I use those um, smart water bottles, like a one liter, you slide it in there. If you're, you know, you're going out for just a night or two and you want to bring like a bottle of whiskey to share with friends, that's going to fit in there. 
And if you really want to be baller, you could probably buy Moscomoto, um, Moscomoto pouches if you wanted to be fancy. And their uh, Molly is the same kind of a system. And it should fit on the Molly for here. That's what you want to do if you want to get a little bigger one. A little bit earlier, I mentioned that I mount these on the front versus the back. And that's just because I don't ride with a passenger, so there's no reason to have it. In fact, I even have my rear sets removed. So nobody's legs are going to be going there, interfering with it. When it comes to, if you if you don't, if you have a tall bottle, it, this is going to cover the reflective anyway. So I want the reflective on the back to be fully visible for safety. And from a, like a physics standpoint, if you look, I want weight as, as centered as I can over that rear wheel. Um, ideally, you'd want the weight as centered as you could over the suspension, but I'm, you know, the rider is that weight. So the next best spot from right over the suspension is going to be here, right over the wheel. The farther out you get this with heavy things like liquid, uh, it, it, it just causes some things that I don't really like as far as physics goes. You know, you want to have your weight as close to the center. So because of the, that kind of that combination of situations, I just mount them to where my bottles are on the front. And then I can, uh, if I'm sitting here and I need to get to a water bottle while sitting on the bike, I can, I can do it here without having to get off the bike and, you know, kind of fish around the back. Overall, at first install, I really like them. Haven't seen anything that you could detect uh, in a first install, like when you first get it on the bike, that would cause me to want to return them or not want to go with them as an option. As with everything, time will tell. The biggest feature or the best feature of these Moscomotos that my friend loaned me, these are a decade old now. They've been to, I, I, you know, I don't know if it's 100 countries, but they've been to a lot of countries, a lot of different trips internationally. Uh, they have been, you know, romped on on a DR650 in Baja. They're just rock solid, and they still work. If you, you know, they're dirty from from road dust and stuff. But if you clean them up, they are going to work exactly as good as the day they were purchased. And that is, you know, that's quality. These ones, they seem very overbuilt. I I don't see any reason why these shouldn't last that long. They're very strong uh, nylon. The, the TPU looks pretty good, but I will say that's one of my areas that I'm going to keep an eye on as it ages. Time will tell. Do the tusks hold up? But if you read the reviews and see the other videos, there's guys who have had these for, for a number of years and really put them through their paces and they're quite happy with them. So again, I guess I'll let you know in a couple seasons how they're holding up. Like that about them. Uh, stuff I don't like about them. Well, first off, uh, you know it's kind of a it's kind of a, a toss up. If you want to have a bike that if you want to install these on a motorcycle that doesn't have a rack, you're going to need to buy their rack, which is you know a couple of hundred dollars. And so now you're getting into four or five hundred bucks if you buy your pucks too. You know to, to try to make it like this, um, you're getting up into six seven hundred dollars, seven hundred fifty dollars for the set. And at that point, somebody might say, just buy the Moscomotos. So I don't know if I would call it a disadvantage, but the thing is, these are what they are. If you can enjoy a, a strapped-on system that does not need quick disconnect all the time, you're trying to save some weight, you just need 35 liters on each side of your bike, and uh, you know you don't want to break the bank, I think these are amazing. They're very good for that. If you buy them wanting them to be something they're not, um, they're not going to have a lot of those premium features or even the features that hard boxes would have. And there's people I know that that ride with these. They they camp with hard boxes all the time, and they, you know, they bang them back into shape if they drop them. The other disadvantage here is, as you could see in the other video, you know, I had to get a I had to do a little bit of work with an angle grinder to make a part to make these things really work. So, you know, the exhaust is going to be kind of close to them from the factory if you don't want to build yourself a little bracket. If you're not a person who wants to do that and you're flush with cash, you might say, hey, I'm going to gra grab those Moscomotos, whoops, bolt them onto my rack, and I'm just going to be done with, uh, with that. I'm not going to mess with it. So, again, 
I'm a tinkerer. Uh, you guys know that if you've seen the videos. You know, we've got a cam in this bike already, and it's not even at 3,000 miles. Yeah, if you want to you wanna wrench, these are probably a really good option for you. If you want to buy all-in-one, get something more expensive. Now, the Himalayan in particular, some people don't like this rack. The rack, the way it works, the um, factory luggage rack. They think it's kind of bulky, and, and maybe it is. But it has, because of its bulk and its kind of over-engineered uh, kind of relocation of the lights, it has some really cool advantages for mounting these bags. One of the things I like about the, the Himalayan is that down here, because it has this, it has this space to place the uh, cross beam, the cross bracket here, it has this nice drilled and welded spot to where our mounting strap for the tusks can go under something. So you think like your top straps are really, you know, holding it so that weight can be applied to these. But a lot of racks down here, if you don't have this, what you're gonna have is outward retention, but not upward retention. And the Himalayan um, racks, as you can see down here, where I've mounted them, uh, they, they have great upward retention. So going over bumps, pushing up, it retains it really well. Same thing over here. And you take a look at this side. It's the same story. Because we have a diagonal piece here, our strap can go under something. So it's going around something and under something, which really cinches it on there pretty well. Kind of happy with that. Folks could maybe say this is ugly. Uh, when I'm camping, I won't notice. I'm going to put the center bag right over top of it, my soft bag. But yeah, the, the racks for the Himalayans, I, I feel like these bags work really well with this bike. If you are comfortable enough, you know, look at the back end there again, you can see the, the distance between the exhaust and the bag. If you're comfortable building the, the rack extender or the, uh, the exhaust bracket extender, I think these are a great option. For the Himalayan to get you out and and get into some soft luggage that isn't gonna you know Hulk smash if you dump the bike. Pretty pleased. I'm gonna do a loadout video as we get closer to April, uh, as I redo all my gear, um, and then we'll load them up and talk about you know everything that can fit in these things and and what I'm taking this this season for my um, for my camping. That'll also be when we pull these tires off. And I think I'm just going to throw some EO7s on there for this season. So more stuff to come, but really happy with these bags. Going to see how long they last. I just think, man, I got them shipped for what it was like 225 or something like that, and two something uh, low to mid twos on Amazon. That's a really screaming deal for what you get if you don't mind maybe. A little slower time accessing things out of your bag and you're okay with not having quick disconnect and you're okay with maybe having to mess with the exhaust a little bit I think they're a killer option so that's the long version guys hope you enjoyed it guys on the Facebook page hope you had a cold beer today hope you ride your motorcycles have a good one